Okay, welcome back everybody. I am so excited to share this video with you guys. This is a big video and it is a long video. There's a lot of content to cover. So I just want to jump right in. There's a few things we need to do real quick to get this ready for paint. One of which is the front roadside banana wrap. It was completely missing if you remember when I got this trailer. I had been torn off. Someone had run it into a curb or something. So uh, I tried to have that fabricated, but that didn't really work out. I don't think there's many people actually in this world who could fabricate uh, that shape um, by hand. It's pretty complicated. So I found one online, just a plastic one that's for the newer Airstreams, and it had a little spot for a reflector, so it didn't match the other uh, banana wrap. I had my buddy Jake, who did a lot of the body work, grind that off and fill it with a fiberglass, and then I came back and skim coated it with some filler, and then epoxied it with the Total Boat Epoxy Primer, and uh, then we had to put it on. It was a little bit tricky because obviously it's for the newer trailers, it didn't really fit well, uh, but we were able to cut it, trim it, and kind of get it on there, make it work. Uh, and you know, it, it, you can tell it kind of has an angle to it, but we're gonna run a trim piece all the way around the bottom. It's gonna cover that seam up um, across the whole camper. So shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the second thing we had to do is get the new wheels on, which you guys picked out. So let's just jump right in and get started on that. Okay, how's it going everybody? We got wheels today. I'm pretty excited about this. They showed up uh, last week actually. Straight from me trailer, it almost feels like Christmas in here. We got tires, rims, and the baby moons. You guys made the decision. You guys made the call, and there they are. So cool. And we're going vintage. I'm pretty pumped about this. One of the steel rims down there. Tire in here, a little bit dark. Ah, Lee, I cannot wait. You can tell this camper. You can tell this camper, if you look, is kind of leaning. It's got flat tires on that side, so it's not even drivable at this point. I'm going to get these out of the box, take them to the tire shop, and it's actually great timing because I've secured a warehouse to paint this thing in, so we're going to have to move it here soon to put paint on it. So I'm going to get these wheels, take them to get them mounted, get them on the trailer, and then we're going to paint this thing. Also, a big thank you to everyone who leaves comments, especially the front hitch recommendation. Y'all are geniuses. I never would have thought of that. And it is incredibly easy to get the camper in and out of that tight spot with this. I actually did hit the wall, too, the third time, right after I posted the video. Broke my trim here. So, you can see I scratched it up and chipped it up here. It was bad. It was kind of embarrassing. So, if that was the point where I was like, okay, we're getting the front hitch. And we did. And it's awesome. All right, it's gonna be dark in here. I'm gonna try to crank this up. I, I gotta tell you, I'm already bummed out. This has already got rust in here and I literally worked last year so much to get all the rust. Brand new parts, brand new axles, already rusting, man. That drives me bonkers. Let's put some paint on that. Um, what we're gonna do is this little spot here, you can see there's a little reveal. This used to, this is a piece of aluminum channel, C channel basically that the subfloor hooks into and the old wheel well used to drop in here and actually be flush here and fill this in. The new wheel well is uh, 3 16 aluminum and uh, it just kind of landed where it landed so I've got a bead of Volcom down in here but we need a I need to put a bead here and so what I'm gonna do that's a pretty big chunk to fill right there if you can see you can't just put a bunch of Volcom in that 
I'm gonna put some threaded rod in there. We're gonna cut it, drop it in there, fill the gap with some of that threaded rod, and then run the bead over that. Kind of work this side, get all this in here, this little gap there, get all that filled in, clean this off, and that'll do it. Trying to, I don't know. I gotta get all this sealed up under here. So. Oh, grease and everything? Yeah, it's a sealer. Oh. Just to keep water going up in the. Oh, into the thing when, yeah. the, when the wheels are turning? Yeah, yeah. Nasty stuff, though. Can I just say a huge thanks to E-Trailer. These guys have absolutely pulled through on this build. If you need tires, wheels, rims for your trailer, they have a huge selection. They have vintage, they have modern, they have everything you possibly could need. Go check them out, link in the description. Thanks E-Trailer. Okay, I want to take a quick break to tell you about my good friends over at Simply Safe who have sponsored this channel for a while. A big thanks to them. They make an amazing home security system. If you need to secure your home, now is the time. It's super easy. Just order it online, shows up at your house. Very simple to set up. It has every monitor you need to monitor every aspect of your home, plus HD cameras. And it'll monitor 24 seven, even if the power goes off. The best part about it, there are no contracts. You just pay monthly and it's 50 cents a day to get your house secured. Now I use Simply Safe to monitor both my shop and my house. Let me show you real quick what I use to monitor the shop. So this is your home base. Everything works off of this right here. Very clean looking, very elegant, nice little light on it. This is your keypad. You control the whole unit off this, hook up all your devices using this keypad. You've got a little key fob that allows you to arm the system right from that. Um, smoke detector in my shop, very important. Uh, if there's any fire hazard or anything, I know I'm covered on that. I've got motion sensor. If anyone gets into my shop, this will alert me to any motion. I've got uh, temperature sensor, so I know what the temperature in my shop is always, which is a good thing. Um, this is glass break. Anyone tries to break a window, that is secure. Also have a panic button, which I don't really use much in the shop, but I do keep this in a great spot in my house. This is one of my favorites, a water detection. My shop does tend to flood, so this is a great to have and alert me if any water comes into the shop. And then you've got an HD camera. I have two of these in here, one on my CNC and one just overall to look at my shop. I can access these from my cell phone at any time using the Simply Safe app and check on uh, what's going on in the shop and even check on the CNC if it's running. So I have entry sensors on the windows and the doors. These are a little old and dirty. They've been in here for a while, but they still work great. This will probably set the alarm off. Yep. Uh, can't show you my code. Alarm off. And I get a notification. Pretty cool. Now at my house, I have a few extra items that I want to show you that I really do love. First being the doorbell camera. This camera alerts me to any motion. So if anyone walks up to the house, it detects the motion and it sends a notification to my phone, which I should have just gotten right there. You can see I've had three notifications this morning. My kids have been playing outside a lot. Coming around here on our side door, we have the keypad door lock so I can, um, 
This door is locked. I built this door, by the way. It's pretty nice, isn't it? We can unlock this door right here using this little keypad. And access the house. It also tells you if someone's entered the code multiple times incorrectly, uh, which I know because my kids do it all the time. So you can support the channel by going to check out Simply Safe. Now their award-winning home security system, it is a great time to do so because they've just upgraded devices. They're half the size, double the range with five times faster speed. I highly recommend you guys head down to the description, click the link at simplysafe.com forward slash Andy Rawls. A huge thanks to Simply Safe. Now let's go paint this Argosy. Okay, so I've got her all loaded up on the truck. Wheels are all on, she's ready to roll. We're gonna take her to another location. Let's get rolling down the road. Okay, so here we are. Um, checked out this space I have to work in. Um, unfortunately though, it does not have power yet. They haven't hooked it up. It's brand new and they're starting to lease it out a week from today. So I have basically a full week to get this done. So today, jumping right on it, we're gonna start prepping, tape off the bottom section because um, we're gonna have a nice clean line right here. We're gonna tape off all the windows, probably scuff it up a little bit, clean it one more time really well. And I do have a little bit more priming to do on the bottom. So I just gotta plan my timing out properly, get the coat on, come back the next day, get the next coat, and basically go through all four coats. Let's do this. Okay folks, so we are on day two. Today's the day we paint. I gotta say I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I just hope this goes, just hope this goes smoothly. It's expensive paint, a lot of money in paint, and yeah, if it doesn't go well, it's gonna be a huge bummer. I, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't. I've already painted the top, and it's stuck and adhered to the top, no problem. It looks great up there. Um, the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about is the amount of paint. I basically have four cans for each coat. Um, Hopefully that's enough because if it's not I have to get it special custom ordered and it takes a while to get here And we won't have the warehouse space anymore. So Just hoping we can make it last. Here's my game plan. We're going to uh, Spray around all the windows. It's just gonna be way easier to spray that than it would be to try to brush it and roll it Do that around all these frames and then we'll just each my dad and I will just work each side down with the rollers and roll it all on Should be Should work just fine. We got it all taped off prepped. I'm guessing the most important thing Tell myself is not to spill it. 
Yeah. Because if we spill it and waste it, that's bad. Okay, first coat is on. I think it looks pretty good, pretty happy with it. We, we think. I mean, it's the coverage is light, um, so it's you know it's definitely not pretty. Uh, but I think second coat um, is going to really even everything out, and it's going to look really good. Um, it's stinky in here. We got power, so while we were painting this, they hooked up the meter. So tomorrow we can actually spray around the windows, and that should help out a lot. And I think the second coat is going to look a whole lot better. Today we're going to try to spray around the windows because it's been it was really difficult yesterday to brush in and roll through all this you know these little gutters and everything so we'll just spray around the frames and then try to roll out the paint from there i think we'll get better results and hopefully on the second coat the coverage will be a little bit better and maybe possibly the last coat we'll see You did see right there I got super super frustrated because there was a bunch of oak pollen behind this light up here um, and when I was spraying it it just shot it all out all over the wet paint uh, pretty bummed out about that we'll have to sand it I'll have to let it dry sand it get it all out and then put a third coat on I was hoping not to have to do three coats but I've got two and a half cans of paint left um, this time I did not waste it I mixed up what I needed uh, so that's good we got two and a half coat two and a half cans of paint left plenty to put a third coat on and i think it kind of needs it the coverage it looks so much better than the first coat but coverage is still not quite there uh you know it's still spots where you can kind of see it through a little bit of primer in there um it's laying down really pretty smooth if you look in the light um there's definitely some rough spots and there's definitely some spots where the primer was rough and i just didn't prep it well enough so we'll get one more coat on we'll have to wait till tomorrow to do that it'll put us a day behind um so i'll probably work this weekend but that's okay two coats on the bottom hopefully two coats because the bottom is a color i'm not going to tell you what color it is yet but you'll find out hopefully those two coats will cover the bottom uh cover that primer it's looking good. This is exciting for me. This is like restores my energy in this project to see paint going on it. Even though it's a ton of work, the whole thing's been a ton of work. I'm feeling refreshed. I'm feeling excited. I can't wait to have it done and move on to the interior. Okay, so just got back up to the warehouse and it's been about 
I don't know, three or four hours since we laid down this third coat. And I gotta say, guys, I'm pretty bummed. It doesn't look great. Um, I don't know what happened on the third coat. I just didn't lay it down very well. I think, I really think I wasn't putting enough paint down. But, I mean, obviously there's no fixing this. There's no coming back. I'm hoping maybe over time it'll get better. But it's really hard to see in the light. Street marks, if you can kind of catch them. It's going to be so hard to see with the camera. But you can see them right there where that light hits. Those aren't super noticeable on camera. But, in person, they're pretty darn noticeable, and they do not look that good. Um, super big bummer. Step back a little bit. You can almost see them right there. Okay, so this project really honestly has been a lot of up and downs. And I feel like, honestly, it's been more downs than ups. And I know it's going to all work out, and I'm okay with that. But the paint's not going well. Um... Just got off the phone with Jason over, over at Epiphany's. We've talked before. I didn't really prepare myself for this very well. I didn't realize you're supposed to thin the paint. He said it was very important to thin the paint. 7 to 10%. Um, if it's hotter and warmer, which it is here in Texas, 10% definitely. Uh, it's going to roll on much nicer. It's going to go on much smoother, he said. I didn't thin the paint. Um, I didn't even think about it. I don't know why. I just thought it, this out of the can it would roll on just fine. And it appeared to be until this third coat. So, um, first I want to say, I don't want this to reflect bad on Epiphany's. Um, it's a great product. They're a good company. They've been super helpful. Uh, so, it's not, the, it's not the paint. It's the applicator. It's me. Uh, it is typically, that's typically the problem. I usually am the one that messes things up. Just been one heck of a journey. And every time something goes wrong, I just kind of want to say, I'm, not, I'm done with this, but I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to keep driving forward. It's not going to be perfect. Uh, I hate that the paint doesn't look good, and I hate that I messed this up, but I'm going to fix it. And maybe in the fall, maybe in the winter, um, I'll get it better, though. Uh, for now, we just got to get it done, because this is the window I have, this is the space I have. And, you know, if you stand back 20 feet, she looks pretty good. If you walk up close, you find a lot of problems, and that's just what it is. Okay, first coat of green's on, and I gotta be honest with you guys, this is not exactly the green I was aiming for. Uh, the color chart online looked a little different, obviously that's understandable because it's on a computer, but I wasn't really shooting for forest green. I was shooting for more of a light, kind of lightish green color, um, kind of like this. And this is not that color. So. I'm just gonna have to, it's gonna have to grow on me. I'm gonna have to just slowly start to like it more, which I think I will. I'm starting to like it a little more right now, maybe. We'll see.
Okay, we're back to the shop. Let's do a real quick walkthrough. Hey, bud. Let's do a real quick walkthrough of kind of what went wrong so you guys can see it. Okay, first thing you'll notice is some issues with, with where I taped it off. There's actually gonna be an aluminum trim piece coming around and stopping right about here. So this part here is what needs to be nice and clean. Hey, buddy. What do you think of the camper? I think you said you like it. I like it too. There's a few dents that popped out that I didn't notice. There's a little line here where it got scraped. Um, once you put that gloss paint on, it kind of stands out. The, you know, the stripes in the side are still there. We're gonna have to eventually recoat this whole um, side when it cools off, I think, and, and we'll thin the paint and do it properly. The biggest issue outside of that, you know, I can kind of live with that. Um, in this flat light, you really can't see it, but a much bigger issue is this. So we have adhesion issues around the window frames. I did not, this is a two-part finish. You, if you, you have to sand the epoxy primer to get good adhesion. I didn't sand well around these window frames at all. In fact, I think I skipped them because I didn't want to burn through rivets and it was just hard to sand and it's it's bad. So the paint's peeling off this window frame and one in the front. I have to expect if it's peeling off, I mean, that's, that's no bueno. If it's peeling off this one, it's probably gonna peel off most of them. The plus side, the only good thing to this is that I can just tape off this whole frame and just repaint it, get it, clean all the bad paint off, sand it down real good and repaint it. I've gone through and I've thoroughly checked many areas of this camper, scraping it, trying to get paint to come off. And I think as far as the body goes, the main area of the camper, we've got really good adhesion. I sanded a lot on this stuff, so I don't think we're gonna have any issues. Um, here, I think the window frames are where the problems are, because I just didn't sand them well enough. So time will tell um, if they start peeling. It's just gonna be more work. I'm gonna have to tape them off and repaint. Okay, so it's time to shut this video down. I gotta tell you guys, the color, it's really growing on me. I actually am starting to really love it. I've had nothing but really good comments from people who have seen it, uh, especially my wife, which if that's, if she's happy, I'm happy. It's way less emerald green. So do you like the green? Is that better or better? I like it. I think it looks more like the sample we picked. Yeah, it looks a little different than in the photo, doesn't it? Yeah, it's got a little more turquoise to it. It looks really good. Awesome. Yeah, it looks a lot better once we got it out of the warehouse. Show me where you messed up. Right there. So we're gonna have to repaint the window frame. It didn't get sanded good enough. Oh. But you can tape it off and just paint the, this part. But other than that. Just the one or do you have to do all of them? No, just there's that one and there's one up front. And then there's a few spots like, just touch it up. like if you look along here, can you see like the stripes in the light? Yeah, but nobody would ever notice that. I know, but I could repaint all that too. Yeah, I wouldn't. That was my fault. I just want to say thank you. First off, I want to say thanks to my dad for taking the whole week to help me paint this and for dealing with my craziness and my frustration and my stress. He's an awesome man and I really appreciate all of his help. I want to say thank you to E-Trailer for the wheels. They are really, really cool. The link is in the description for those. I want to say thanks to Total Boat for all the products they've helped me with. For the primer for this, for directing me towards Epiphanies. They actually um, kind of directed me towards that paint. They provided some awesome epoxies. I um, actually used uh, one of their epoxies to fix the light ballast that goes on the back, which I'll be putting on soon. So they have some amazing products that have really helped um, get this thing to this point. I wanna say, most importantly, thanks to you guys. Thanks for those who have stuck along with me. I know this has been a long, long journey, much longer than I anticipated. And for those of you who are still here, I am so grateful. Thank you for that. We're getting closer, folks. It's getting there. It's about time to start the interior. I've got a few things to do to finish up the walls, get that top panel in and then I'm gonna start building it out. And I just, I can't wait. I'm fired up, I've got new energy now, so expect some more content coming very soon. Let's end this video. You can't really appreciate what this is without seeing what it was. Let's take a quick walk around. Um, as you can tell, you know, it's, it's an old trailer. This is 76, so there's gonna be a lot of issues. Uh, you see quite a bit of damage here. This, this is called the banana wrap on the bottom here, and these are actually really hard to replace so this one is in pretty bad shape the other one is completely non-existent they ran it up on a curb or something the outriggers are all bent and the, the aluminum is just gone and then you got some body damage here I'm not really sure I'm gonna fix all that um, you got a little bit of bondo over here we're gonna tear the interior walls off and we'll get an idea I can tell there's a maybe a fiberglass patch in there so 
really honestly, instead of putting all this junk in here, they should have just made an aluminum patch. I don't know why they didn't do that. One thing about the Argosies is you see the rust up here. So this whole end cap is a galvanized steel end cap. That was one of the cost saving points on the Argosy. It wasn't aluminum, that cool aluminum wrap that you see on the silver air streams. This was all galvanized. We'll be able to clean that rust off pretty easily, but uh, that's just one of the features of an Argosy.